And my third case study, World Jewish Relief Working in Pakistan. Following the devastating earthquake in 2005, World Jewish Relief began to work with a Muslim partner in Pakistan called Human Aid Focus, implementing a major development program in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake, such as providing temporary shelters and so on. HAF operates in the district of Azad Kashmir, encouraging social development through the establishment of community-based organizations. At the time of the earthquake, it was decided that the Jewish partner in this humanitarian aid support should be transparent. Despite some concerns that humanitarian aid had been refused elsewhere because it was of Jewish origin. In Pakistan, the source of the aid was welcomed and provoked a new interest in Judaism amongst people who knew little or nothing about the religion. As a result, World Jewish Relief's involvement has led to an unexpected celebration of cross-communal cooperation at grassroots as well as senior levels. There have been talks about formalizing education about Judaism in the Kashmir area, for example and initiating interfaith dialogue. World Jewish Relief's involvement in earthquake relief assisted in dispelling myths about Judaism in a region where radicalization poses a genuine threat to inter-religious understanding. There are three lessons from this case study. The benefit of transparent support. Collaboration between faith-based humanitarian aid organizations furthers interreligious and cross-cultural understanding and produce, sorry, positive grassroots relations in one region can be an unexpected but valuable byproduct of the humanitarian relief effort. So how can we improve the effectiveness of faith-based humanitarian aid organizations in a native interfaith context? Firstly, all faith-based humanitarian aid organizations should be made aware of the value of collaboration. I would recommend that each major faith-based organization appoints an interfaith worker whose role is to work with different faith communities to develop interfaith collaboration. And this actually is applicable also to the secular sector. We should increase the number of collaborative projects on the ground reach out to local religious leaders and their communal organizations, generate trust and confidence in areas where the organization works. I would like to see more partnerships on the ground, particularly between faith-based organizations founded on shared goals. Thirdly, we need to establish advisory groups with representatives from different faith communities. When an organization is working in an area with communities of different religions, it would be helpful to have access to advice pulled from experience and knowledge of these religious communities. We need to provide faith literacy educational programs designed for staff working in faith-based organizations. Staff in offices in one part of the world would benefit from courses about another part of the world, focusing not only on similarities but differences and practices of different faith communities. With many shared goals, principles, and regions where development work is undertaken, I would also propose the establishment of a network between organizations. Perhaps each organization can offer an internship to another and pool expertise. And finally, we need to publicize the existing activities. I've mentioned Christian aid, Islamic relief, World Jewish relief, the collaborative work being done by these organizations and others, I'm sure, is insufficiently known by the respective faith communities. But what are the challenges? There are some specific challenges faced by faith-based humanitarian aid organizations. Firstly, the donors. Some donors face concern, uh, share concerns with their faith-based organizations about giving to others before their own. I understand that concern should be given to poverty on one's own doorstep. But 
we should remind these supporters and donors that we do live in an interdependent world. We live in what's called our global village, closer than ever before to those far away from us. We also face the challenge of local politics and carefully manage the risks of appearing to represent one faith group or another. An example was faced in the Sudan case study where Islamic release logo, a dome with two minarets, was perceived by some as political. Similarly, a cross, a star of David, may pose similar risk. But there is also the opportunity for faith-based organizations to overcome local misperceptions. Finally, proselytism. The baggage of historical memory, such as a history of persecution or forward conversion, may linger in a faith's community's collective memory, leading to suspicion towards another faith-based organization. It should be made clear that a faith organization is not proselytizing, but rather seeks to provide aid to people in their need. As the Christian Aid website states, we believe that all people are created equal with inherent dignity and infinite worth. Individual needs must always come first, ahead of dogma, ideology, or political necessity. And one more point. Organizations must take care in their use of vocabulary because words gain meanings from the context in which they are used. Words like crusade, mission, jihad, Zionist can have more than one meaning, can cause great misunderstanding. On the other hand, in the experience of Islamic relief, de 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 developmental advice is taken more seriously when framed in religious talk. Therefore, religious language should be used, but should be used carefully with knowledge of the community to whom it is addressed. So I hope these thoughts are helpful in our conversation today and these case studies show that collaboration between faith communities in humanitarian development are no longer an optional extra, but essential, a prerequisite for us all. Thank you.